Hello class, here's extra practice with module six. You'll notice we have three questions. Each one has multiple parts. And the topics here, well, we have point estimation of a parameter. We have confidence intervals, which is the interval estimation. And then we'll use a Monte Carlo simulation to address coverage probabilities for confidence intervals. Now you'll notice what is not on this that we discussed in this module is bootstrap confidence intervals. Um, I will give you some of that in the hand-in exercises and you definitely should have worked through the Canvas pages on that topic, but we don't have any on this extra practice. Okay, let's see. The first question, 1A, we are asked about analytic maximum likelihood estimator. So for this, we're going to be using calculus and I'm first going to work on my iPad. We are working with the exponential distribution. We know the probability density function is f of x is lambda e to the minus lambda x. Well, what would be the likelihood function? Uh, let's see, we would have say x1, x2, xn, and then parameter lambda. Well, we would multiply. We would have lambda e to the minus lambda x1 times lambda e to the minus lambda x2 and then keep multiplying out to lambda e to the minus lambda xn. Um, we can use properties of exponents here. You notice we have a lambda to the n, and then we have e to the minus lambda. We will have a sum here, so times the sum i equals one to n of xi. Well, Let's work with the log likelihood function. So the log likelihood function, L of lambda, we take the natural log of this and we use properties of logarithms to simplify. And then we will work to maximize this. Okay, the first thing I notice is I have a product on the inside of my logarithm. This will be ln of lambda to the n plus the natural log of e to the minus lambda times the sum i equals one to n of xi. Really, I just have one more step. So the first term we have n natural log lambda, and then here ln of e to the something is that something. So we just get, oh, it's gonna be a minus. We just get minus lambda times the sum i equals one to n of xi. Okay, fantastic. Now this is my log likelihood function. How do we maximize this? Well, using calculus, we would take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So we have to remember we're differentiating with respect to lambda. So n is a constant. So the derivative of the first term is just n over lambda. Derivative of natural log, lambda is one over lambda. And then here, well, this whole sum, i equals one to n, xi. This is a constant with respect to lambda. And so when you differentiate lambda, we have one, okay. Put that all together in the second term when you take the derivative, you get this. And I will label, this is the log likelihood function right here. And then we differentiate. Okay, let's move to the next page. I will copy. and paste the derivative of the log likelihood function is zero. This is where we will have our maximum. Well, we get that n over lambda equals the sum i equals one to n of xi. 
Now we can div divide both sides by n. We get one over lambda is one over n, the sum i equals one to n of xi. And finally, what do you notice about this? This is the sample mean. And so we get this maximum likelihood estimator, lambda hat will be one over x bar. That was a nice exercise where we use calculus. Now, there is a second part to this. It says we want to show that the maximum likelihood estimator is the same as the method of moments estimator for the parameter lambda. Well, method of moments, the first moment is the sample mean. So we know the method of moments estimator would also be one over x bar. So this is the second part. Now we have finished the part of this worksheet that I'm going to do on my iPad. So for the rest of it, let's switch to R. We continue with number one, one B. We have a random sample of size six from the exponential distribution. We don't know the parameter, however, and here is our random sample. Okay, we want to find the maximum likelihood estimator two ways. One, using the analytic formula, that we just derived. It will be one over the mean. Now, then we will also use numeric optimization in R, and we can almost just copy and paste the commands that were built into our Canvas course with a different example. Okay, so first, let me clear any save variables. And then we begin with number 1B. Here are my observations. I have all six elements stored in this variable. And then we will define this log likelihood function. And we can use this command to optimize. You see here, we get about 0 0.8996. So it's about 0 0.9. The other way, using the analytic formula, well, we just take one over the mean of this sample, and you see they're very close, so this is fantastic. All right, number two, we have a random sample of size 53 from the chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom. We are given the sample mean, 100.8. We are given the standard deviation of the sample, 12.4. We want to find the point estimator for K, the degrees of freedom using method of moments, and then a one-sided confidence interval, 90% confidence interval that gives a lower bound. Well, we know for the chi-square distribution, the number of degrees of freedom K is the mean. So the method of moments, estimator is the sample mean. There is not much to calculate here given we are handed the sample mean, so I will just run this as a comment that the method of moments estimator for k is the sample mean. Next, um, I could have already cleared my save variables, but I will right here. So now we want to create this one-sided 90% confidence interval that will give a lower bound. So let me store some things. My N is 53. My mean, sample mean, 100.8. And then sample standard deviation is 12.4. We will use a T interval. We don't know the population standard deviation. We know sample standard deviation. And we can use a T interval with 52 degrees of freedom. Okay. 90% says I want 0.1 in the tail. And so here I can create this lower bound. We take the sample mean plus this 0.1 quantile from the T distribution with, well, will be 52 degrees of freedom times 12.4 over the square root of 53.
Here's my confidence interval. Goes from 98.6 approximately to infinity. So our lower bound is 98.6. Next question. First, let's clear the same variables. All right, this is a fun one. We have 50 observations from a Poisson distribution. Megumi and Sean, they both have different methods for creating a 90% confidence interval for the parameter lambda. Poisson distribution has one parameter, lambda. That parameter is the mean. It's also the variance. Okay, so Megumi creates a 90% confidence interval using mean and a T interval. And the formula is listed right here. Sean creates a 90% confidence interval for this parameter lambda using a confidence interval for variance. And the formula is also given here. This is a chi-square interval. Okay, we will create an R script to study the coverage probabilities of these two different methods. We want 10,000 data sets from the Poisson distribution. And for each one, I will create a confidence interval for Megumi, a confidence interval for Sean. And then I'll just see if the true parameter lambda lies in the interval or not for each one of these 10,000 confidence intervals. So we'll do this for a lambda equals 0.3 and also lambda equals 8. All right. First, let's write this R script so I can create a function of lambda that does this. Okay, well, we are given we want 10,000 simulations. And here is where I will create this function of lambda. First, I create these vectors, COV1, this will be for Megumi's method, COV2, this will be for Sean's method. Here's my for loop. Now I'm not finished with defining this function, but let's look at this for loop. So 10,000 times we sample 50 from the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. I calculate the mean, I calculate the standard deviation for the sample. Then I create confidence interval one is Megumi's method. This is the 90% confidence interval for this parameter using the mean. Confidence interval two, for each sample of size 50, this is Sean's method. We create a confidence interval for the parameter lambda using variance. And then here I'm storing in each vector, um, I will store true if the parameter lambda falls in that confidence interval and it will store false if the parameter lambda does not. Then here, this will be the output. So this is the end of letter A. I've written a function of lambda. Letter, that was the hard work. Letter B will be very short. Okay, so for letter B, I just call this function for lambda equals 0.3 and for lambda equals 8. Lambda equals 0.3. The coverage for Megumi's confidence interval is 0 0.9115. The coverage for Sean's confidence interval is 0 0.691. And then lambda equals 8. The coverage for Megumi's confidence interval, 0 0.9. 082. And similarly, the coverage for Sean's confidence interval is 0 0.8925. So we have finished B. But the question is, looking at this, which is better? Um, why would that be the case? And can we explain what's going on with Sean's confidence interval? Well, I will put, let's see, I have this commented but we can see it in R. So what would be the discussion here? The Poisson distribution is not the normal distribution. The confidence intervals for variance require a normal distribution. This is why we see such a low coverage for Sean's confidence interval. Well, especially with the lambda equals 0.3. In both cases, Magumi's confidence interval, which used the 
confidence intervals for mean were much better. And well, we have the central limit theorem and is 50 here. And so this T interval is a very nice one to use. Here is exactly what I just said. Now, you might wonder, you see for lambda equals eight, Sean's confidence interval, which came from variance, looks pretty good. And why would that be the case? That's the second part. Can you explain why that is pretty nice looking? Well, what we can do is make a histogram. Here's a histogram I have sampled 100,000 times from, from the Poisson distribution with lambda equals eight. We can kind of see the shape of this distribution well, in this graph. So you notice this looks bell-shaped and this really explains why Sean's interval for lambda equals eight is not that bad. So to write that as a sentence here, for large lambda, the Poisson distribution is close to bell-shaped, which is why Sean's confidence interval works much better for lambda equals eight, although I have misspelled the word lambda. Well, this is the end of this third question and the end of this extra practice worksheet. Thank you so much, class.